even the president admitting today it's impossible to know if BP's latest fix will work. If it's successful, and there are no guarantees, it should greatly reduce or eliminate the flow of oil now streaming into the Gulf from the seafloor. And if it's not, there are other approaches that may be viable. So what are those approaches, and why haven't we tried them already? Matt Simmons, oil industry expert, chairman emeritus of Simmons & Company International. Also with us, Nicholas Pazzi, chairman of WOW Energy Solutions. Uh, uh, nice to see you both. Matt, again, we, we spoke a couple of days ago, but the connection was terrible. Uh, before we get into alternatives, your assessment of the probability of success with Top Kill, to the extent to which you're skeptical, why? And, and, and if you could just explain why you think it's possible this oil could flow not for months, but for years to come. Why are you so skeptical of efforts to fix it? Well, first of all, I had the luxury this morning, finally, because I now have the, the, the video streaming of the of the leak and it's interesting when you look at the at the riser and you realize you're looking at a 21 and a half inch circumference uh, riser and there looks like a, somewhere between a six and seven inch rip on the top so the stuff coming out it looks like a lot but I actually saw a white fish go through it and come out white so I said this isn't the same as this brown gooey orange stuff that they found in the plume seven miles away. And I still believe that what happened is that the riser blew off the wellhead and is hooked onto the rig. So you've got a mile of oil inside that that's pretty light concentrate. So that's what they're actually trying to get out. So it's not sure that, they, and luckily they placed the top kill correctly, but now they have to see if it'll take mud. It probably will take mud. But then they shouldn't delude themselves that they've stopped the spill. They should now go and say, let's figure out what that plume was all about, because if that's the hole, and the casing blew out, we have an enormous problem. Yeah. So I'll elaborate on that very quickly. You're saying that everybody's seeing the video, but they obviously can't analyze it the same way that you can. You're saying that the video that we're all now looking at right now is not the only leak. Is that what you're saying? That, that's a tiny leak. And what the scientists are saying watching this stain spread is now bigger, I gather, than Maryland and Delaware and several hundred feet thick and this gooey stuff. That's not coming out of there. They, they, they think that's flowing at 120,000 barrels a day. It would almost have to be that big to, to flow that wide. Yeah. And where do you believe the second outlet is relative to what we're seeing on the video, Matt? Well, what, what, what the research vessel found a week ago Sunday was this giant plume about six miles away. And then this huge layer of goo on the ocean floor. That's almost certain. That, I mean, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a natural fracture. I think that's where the wellhead is. Yeah. Then Nick, what do you think? What are you thinking? I, I, I think I think the same. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I know it's more, of course, than than, than the information we received uh, earlier. And and I appreciate his information. This is new to me as well. Uh, and and of course, he has better better information than I do. Uh, I would have to say that I agree with that totally. Uh, the thing is also that because of the casing that was put in had no O-rings, you have multiple places for leaks to occur. So. I would have to say that the, the I, I hope this top kill works, but the probability of it working is probably very slim. Now, could it slow it down? Yes. Could it actually cause an explosion and blow the top off of this particular thing? Absolutely. And that would make it worse. Uh, and that would be my experience. Uh, I, I don't think that BP maybe is using the right procedure. We know that they laxed on the safety procedures. Uh, we also know that they missed, didn't put some O-rings in into the concrete casing, so they have to seal up the concrete casing, uh, basically, which means that without an O-ring in it, you are pumping mud and concrete into the water. And, and so how is that going to seal itself yeah. up? Well, I don't know. I mean, you, you, you could down there put a blowout patch on it, I guess, uh, to keep it in, but that's not been done. You also... Uh, I mean, if it was yeah. me, and, and again, this is just me, my experience is I would basically take that four-inch line and, and, and put it down there under high pressure and balloon it uh, with a liquid, not with any kind of gas or anything. Is basically balloon it, stop it, yeah. and then pour the mud on top of it. I, I want to switch, Nick, if I can, to containment for, yes. just, for just a moment here. And, and that's not to diminish what you just said, Matt, and I think that that analysis is incredibly important and insightful and hopefully will be shared with as many people involved with what's going on there as possible if it hasn't been already. 
to containment we go, though, Nick. One of your ideas that you've talked about in the past is the use of a super tanker. Uh, there is belief that that is a viable option, at least to contain the spill on the top. We asked British Petroleum about that. They sent us the following picture. We'll tee it up for you. And they say the reason we can't send a super tanker in is because you see all those dangling lines and submersibles off of all those ships in the middle of the Gulf. No super tanker can navigate around that spill because it's quite simply too busy. Uh, right. Is that valid? It's valid to a point. You see, see uh, the, the key word here is tanker, not super. Uh, tankers of any size, anything that stores anything can be used of varying sizes. They could be maneuvered using tugs, the bigger ships if necessary, and used to unload whatever those guys are pumping up out of yeah. any depth, if you would, to store the uh, store and separate as well. I mean, you can run it through a centrifuge sure. and separate it and recover some of this energy. Uh, the other thing that's important is that the super tankers, as far as I'm concerned, should be at the center of the spill and then use ROVs or what we call uh, using smart pipe, which can be 48 inches in diameter up to 1,200 feet without uh, flanges or 14 inches down to 10,000 feet without flanges. So, so you have a choice, and that could be made yeah. on the deck of a tanker put in the water, it's flexible, it could be maneuvered using ROVs, and you could suck up those plumes without any trouble whatsoever. Can you think of a reason why they wouldn't already be doing something like that, Matt? No, I cannot. Matt, I, I, what I about you, Matt? I, I think they're so certain that they have the answer, and, that, and, and they're so certain that this, that this riser is hooked onto the wellhead. What they should have done is, to, is made sure followed the riser and see if it's not still on the rig floor. If it's on the rig floor, basically it's nowhere near the wellhead. They right. should have, they should have the day after the plumes were found sent something over to see what the hell it was. Mm. And so you think the most important thing for everybody to understand right now, Matt, is the distinction between the location of what we're seeing on that YouTube video that everybody's watching yeah. and the reality of broken pipes and disassembled equipment across the bottom of the sea floor yeah. that may actually be the responsible for the vast majority of the crude oil or it's, other carbon release into the ocean. Is that correct? It's certainly responsible for the big stain. It's now bigger than Delaware and Maryland. That didn't come yes. from that little dinky no, hole. No, that's right. So what they're doing is basically chasing a mouse, and behind them is a tiger. Yeah. All right, and, listen. And, and, and Matt, to, just to turn around, and, and the diameter of the pipe is actually 22 inches. The inside diameter is actually 21 inches, so it's yeah. half-inch wall pipe. So basically, you can calculate the flow through that pipe, yeah. and it's not... Is it the 5,000 that they're talking about? Probably that particular shot is. But to make the massive mess that's underneath there, and that, that BP has put actual uh, 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 dispersants on it to make it heavier so they could hide, hide the enemy, if you would, um, it, it was not the answer. It, it, may have yeah. been a, it may have been their solution, but it's definitely not what the industry would have done. And, and, and it just made it worse, as far as I'm concerned. So the, what, go I'm, ahead, what I've suggested to several government people is that the Navy should be working on a p program to basically create a device to insert a bomb way down the wellbore and try to blow it up. Exactly. But, you know, you're going to release everything then, aren't you? No, if you, if you put it right down by the well, you, I mean, that's how Red Adair used to yeah, do that. That's right. That's right. That's how they blow out, yeah. blow out well. Yeah. Red Adair used to do that. But, you know, one of the things, yeah. one of the things I tried a while back was kind of like putting a cork on something, yeah. and, and we, we drove a submersible right in the pipe. Of course, it blew it out, but, but that was something that we tried because <laughs> we didn't have any other, any other solutions, you know? Welcome I mean, to the party. Matt, I, th I want to wrap this up, but I think the most then, important then thing... you could actually take these super tankers yeah. and actually put huge, huge gatherings and pump the heavy oil out Absolutely. the bottom of the gulf. Absolutely. I mean, the, yeah. well, the well is 18,360-some-odd yeah. yeah. feet. You yeah. can pump the whole thing out to yeah. the surface yeah. using yeah. super tankers. But we've screwed around for 37 days. Yeah. We've wasted a lot, a lot of, time. of time. A lot of time. A lot of devastation will, will, will occur for, for decades, unfortunately. And, and, you know, we're just trying to help the good people of the Gulf because I don't want to see the Gulf shut down. And, and I think we need to get the super tankers in there. This is a military operation as far as I'm concerned. 
with experts that have been there and done it, and they're not doing it, and I'm mad about it. Yeah, I think everybody in this country is, and I think that the two yes, of you sir. having a conversation like the one that you just had with me and with each other in public is incredibly valuable uh, at a point when there is not uh, enough understanding or information, particularly the identification, Matt, of the second plume, if you will, uh, as the real problem. The elephant behind the mouse right. is the perfect metaphor, and, and as awful as it is to talk about the elephant, the only thing worse than not talking about the elephant is, if the only thing worse is not talking about the elephant. So thank you right. for being willing to do it. Nick, a pleasure. Matt, we'll talk yes. to you sooner than later.